Uh, we're in Psalm 138. We've been traveling through the Psalms. We get Psalm 138. Oh my. Hey, does God still hear you when you pray? Does God still answer your prayers? Just want to make sure I'm with the right crowd tonight. Oh, my goodness. Psalm 138. Well, we certainly want to thank you. I, I appreciate you coming out tonight on this hot summer day. Uh, I think my car, my truck, showed a high of 104 today. I don't know what the official temperature was, but 104 is plenty hot. So, <clears throat> anyway, I appreciate you being with us tonight. <clears throat> and I also want to say, if you join us later by way of YouTube, we appreciate that. And if we are a blessing to you who are listening out there, uh, share uh, this message with others, all right? <clears throat> if ever we needed fervent prayer, I think we need it now. Our church needs prayer. Our nation needs prayer prayer. With inflation, did y'all notice the gas price is creeping up again? $349 is about the average, $349. But inflation, crime, immorality are lurking on every corner. Tonight is both a Bible study and a prayer meeting, both of those. So let me read Psalm 138, eight verses, have a few notes, hope to be a blessing to you. And this is a psalm written by David. I will praise thee with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing unto thee. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for the loving kindness and for thy truth. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. In the day when I cried, thou answeredest me and strengthenest me with strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise thee. O Lord, when they hear the words of thy mouth, yea, they shall sing in the ways of the Lord. For great is the glory of the Lord. Though the Lord be high, yet hath he respect unto the lowly. Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful thought? He's high, he's the almighty God, he's the king of kings, and yet he has respect unto the lowly. <clears throat> but the proud he knoweth afar off. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, thou wilt revive me. Thou shalt stretch forth thine hand against the wrath of mine enemies, and thy right hand shall save me. The right hand, when it speaks of the right hand, anytime you see that in the Bible, it's speaking of the right hand of the Lord, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, it's speaking of his salvation, speaking of his power. When you see the, right, the words right hand, speaking of the power of God. And thy right hand, he said, shall save me. The Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. When he says forsake not the works of thine own hands, he's in reference to himself. Don't forsake me, Lord. Don't forsake me, Lord. I need you. So he's asking the Lord not to forsake him. This psalmist is praising God for hearing and answering his prayers. I mean, has God ever answered prayers for you? When that prayer is answered, don't you think we should take time to thank God for it and praise his name? Give glory to God, and that's what this psalmist is doing. He is praising God for both hearing and answering his prayers. James in the New Testament said, the fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. <clears throat> he says, with all his heart, 
he offers thanksgiving with all his heart. He offers thanksgiving to God. He's thanking God for the answered prayers in his life. It is like we are always saying, and we always say this, God is good all the time. David says that God is forever good. He is forever good. Throughout his life, he will cry out to his God. He will cry out to his God, much like I thank you and I. We cry out to our God. Don't we cry out nearly every single day? We call on God. This is something I found to be interesting. He is not shy, nor is he embarrassed to pray privately or publicly to his God. In other words, he sits down to a meal out in the restaurant. He'll go ahead and pray. He's not embarrassed. He's not shy about asking the blessing. You now, he doesn't make a big fair show of the flesh, but he's not embarrassed to pray either privately or publicly to his God. Morning, noon, or night, David is heard praying. They hear him at home. They hear him in the temple. He regularly praises the name of his God. Regularly praises the name of his God. He says, I will talk to my God before all the other gods. Now, we know there is no other gods. We know that. They're all false gods. But people worship their false gods. And um, in the life of Solomon, the son of David, Solomon married a lot of uh, the women of that nation who worshipped other gods. And do you know Solomon, even though he built the temple for his god, that before his lifetime was over, the women brought their gods into the temple and they worshipped the strange gods in the temple that was built for the Lord? David said, I'm going to worship my God before all the strange gods, before all the false gods. And I'm going to let them know that my God is the true God. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> can you imagine? Can you imagine some day down the road coming through those doors? And we're talking about Allah and Muhammad and other strange gods. And we're talking about them instead of talking about Jesus. We can't imagine that, can we? But that's what took place under Solomon. The temple was built for the purpose of worshiping the one true God. And before his life was over, they were worshiping false gods in the temple. How sad that would be if you came here and somebody was sitting up here teaching you the, about the Quran. How sad that would be. And it is sad to even think that. <clears throat> For there is only one true and living God, and he still has power to move heaven and earth on your behalf. There is nothing too hard for the Lord to do just for you. I said that one night uh, when Boyd was here, and Boyd related to me a story about how God uh, did something special for him. Uh, and it, it was, you know, he knew that God had done it. David loves to go to the temple and pray. He loves to go to the temple and pray. He enjoys it more than going to any sporting event. And let me say, there's nothing wrong with you going and enjoying your life. There's nothing wrong with that. But for the Christian, going to worship at the temple or the church should be something very special, something that brings you joy. He that goeth forth and weepeth bearing precious seed shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. I know there's a lot of baloney going on out there in the world, but I'll tell you what, when you get, when you get to witnessing to other people and inviting them to church or trying to bring them in, into the kingdom of God, there's nothing can take the place of that. 
I'm telling you, you forget about all the other stuff that's going on in the world. Uh, I mean, leading somebody to Jesus is probably the, one of the greatest things you'll ever be allowed to do on this earth. Fellowshipping with God's people is very important for our spiritual well-being. <clears throat> when we pray, we should thank God for both the spiritual blessings. Are there any spiritual blessings? Any spiritual blessings? Okay. We should thank God for the spiritual blessings as well as the physical or the monetary things. You know, when we, we go to the mailbox and now there's a big old check. Hallelujah. We praise the Lord, right? We praise the Lord. Uh, but <clears throat> we can praise God not only for the monetary things, but we can also praise God for the spiritual things, right? We can. Um, and I asked this question. Do you think we should take time uh, to look around and see the goodness of God upon our lives? Do you think that we should maybe take a little bit of time that we can look around and see the goodness of God? I know there's a lot of things going on, and I know you're going through difficult days. I know that. Uh, with all that, what I mentioned earlier, inflation and crime and immorality everywhere, I know you're struggling with some of that stuff. But God is still good, and he, he blesses our lives even through all that nonsense that's going on. <clears throat> David thanked the Lord on a regular basis for his loving kindness. God is so good. He's so loving. It's because of his mercies that we ourselves are not consumed. Amen. Because he's good to us. He's forgiving to us. He knows our weaknesses. He knows that we are but dust. He made us. He knit us together in our mother's womb. And he knows what we're made from. And he knows our weaknesses. <clears throat> it's because of his loving kindness that we have been adopted into his family. Amen. It's because of his generosity that he is constantly blessing our lives. God is good all the time. He's constantly blessing our lives. He is faithful to you. And David said he will forever be faithful. Amen. He will forever. I wish I could say that about me, that I am that way, but I know God is forever, ever faithful. And I also know that he will forever love you. Mm. Oh, my. He is a living being. <clears throat> he who cannot lie. He who cannot lie. Has promised you life abundant and free. He who cannot lie has promised you life abundant and free along with the promise of eternal life, and you shall never perish. Boy, I'm glad I can say that to people, you know. I've preached hundreds of funerals, and when I know the person is a Christian, I'm glad I can say things like that. I'm glad I can tell them about heaven. I'm glad I can tell them about the goodness of God. I'm glad I can tell them about streets of gold. I'm glad I can tell them about the friends that are already there. I'm glad I can tell them all those things. Uh, he said, you shall never perish. The honor of his name, of him keeping his word, the honor of his name is at stake. Jesus said, you have not simply because you ask not. He promised that if we would ask anything in his name, believing, he would hear, he would answer our prayers. So David says, give us strength. Give us strength, O Lord, to, to continue to pray. Give us strength to praise your name, to have hope in you and to have faith, a strong faith, strong Give me faith enough, Lord, that's strong enough to remove a mountain. Someday, every king, every tribe, every nation will bow and give him thanks. Someday, someday that will happen. Someday soon, 
all the inhabitants of heaven and earth will sing hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The angels will sing. We will sing. The saints already gone before will sing hallelujah. Praise Jehovah to the Lamb of God. God's glory is great and he is greatly to be praised. Our God is greater and more powerful than all the kings of the earth put together. Yet, he is kind enough to listen to the prayers of the smallest and most insignificant of human beings. What the world looks at as trash, God looks at as his peculiar and precious treasure. He respects and loves the humble of heart. He loves and respects the humble of heart. We look into the world today and we see that we are surrounded with darkness and evil men everywhere. Boy, I tell you, evil is everywhere. I'm glad I can't see it all. I think I'd be scared to death. But God promises that he will be our refuge and our strength and a very present help whenever we are surrounded by trouble. God's power will protect you. Trust him. Believe in him. You are now an heir to the blessings of Abraham. And God will bless those who bless you and he will cause those who would harm you trouble. And so my admonition is, don't mess with the child of God. You put yourself in harm's way. God has good plans for you. Oh, man, I can rest finally. I can rest. His loving kindness will endure forever. And last but not least, God will never leave you, nor will he ever forsake you. He's the almighty, all-knowing God, and he knows your needs even before we ask. Thank you for listening. All right.